Leading off our discussion tonight is Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell of California. He's a member of the House Intelligence Committee and the House Judiciary Committee. He has been in the David Holmes closed door deposition all afternoon and this evening, and he has just left that deposition to join us. He was also took part in Marie Yovanovitch's public impeachment hearing earlier today. Congressman Swalwell, thank you very much for joining us. And as I understand it, the deposition just wrapped up, has just been completed. Uh, good evening, Lawrence. Uh, we are done with uh, both Ambassador Yovanovitch's testimony and the deposition uh, with David Holmes. And of course, tomorrow morning, bright and early, uh, we have uh, one last witness uh, for the week, uh, an OMB employee. Uh, we have read, as you know, the, the, the his opening statement has become public. It is uh, shocking enough just as an opening statement before you get to any questions. Uh, after this opening statement, uh, what was developed in the six hours of, uh, of testimony that followed it? Just what exactly uh, did Mr. Holmes see? Uh, what did he hear? And what did he do? Uh, you know, it was the reason we called him in uh, today. Uh, I will say first and foremost, uh, with gratitude to Mr. Holmes, uh, because he showed up. He came from Ukraine, and despite... Mick Mulvaney and John Bolton and Secretary uh, Rick Perry uh, refusing to cooperate with our investigation. Uh, Mr. Holmes continues this long line of uh, career Foreign Service officers honoring uh, the duty to cooperate with Congress. And each time someone has done that, just as Mr. Holmes did today, uh, we have learned new information and we learn new information today. And uh uh, in terms of the uh, the security of that phone call, that cell phone call, did you learn any more details about exactly what kind of device that was? Was that a personal cell phone uh, making that uh, call all the more risky? So, Lawrence, I I'm not going to go into his uh, testimony just yet. I'll let our chairman uh, characterize that. Uh, but I will say I think we're about five exits past uh, operational security concerns as it relates to Donald Trump. Uh, we know uh, that Donald Trump uh, does not really op execute or carry out operational security as it relates uh, to his cell phone. There were concerns from other witnesses about Ambassador Sondland and his own operational security. What we are focused on, though, is whether the president leveraged taxpayer dollars for his personal benefit to have the Ukrainians investigate his opponent. And as you heard Ambassador Taylor talk about his interaction with David Holmes I don't think there's anyone in the world who has a hard time believing that Donald Trump, the day after he talked to President Zelensky, followed up with Ambassador Sondland to say, hey, are they going to follow through with these investigations? It's obsessive behavior by the president because he needed those investigations for his own personal political gain. Uh, what can you tell us about David Holmes' uh, credibility in, the, in this six hours and the Republicans' approach to David Holmes' credibility? Uh, well, Lawrence, I, I can tell you, uh, just like people before him, uh, you know, he has served uh, all over uh, the world. Uh, you know, he is a person of integrity. Uh, I did not, you know, judge, uh, you know, any, I did not judge or see any reason to question, you know, his truthfulness. Uh, and again, the fact that he showed up says a lot about who he is compared to so many people who have chosen uh, to defy us. Uh, and I, I don't expect uh, there to be any issues uh, with his integrity or credibility. Uh, the, the opening statement, I think, has many things that are striking. But, but one thing about it is, is it, it's very clear that David Holmes is saying that uh, he didn't see himself as a witness in these proceedings until he heard Republicans complaining uh, repeatedly about hearsay. And he realized that what he has to say is not hearsay. He was a, a, a witness physically present, listening to these words exactly as they were spoken. Uh, what, was there any uh, complaining about hearsay in this deposition today? <laughs> uh, I did not hear uh, them say anything about that, uh, Lawrence. Uh, however, the best evidence remains the president's own words uh, that the president put out. That's an admission by the president. Uh, the next best as evidence we have from people like Ambassador Sondland, uh, who told Ambassador Taylor the president was telling him everything is on the line with the Ukrainians, not just the White House visit, but also the security assistance. And of course, as Ambassador Taylor described, you have a new witness in David Holmes uh, who heard the president 
uh, talking obsessively uh, about the investigations with the Bidens. And, and finally, Lawrence, we use hearsay all the time if we are talking about hearsay uh, to find out uh, and take actions. Uh, by the way, uh, a terrorist named uh, Osama bin Laden uh, was captured and brought to justice uh, in Abbottabad, Pakistan, based on hearsay evidence. So hearsay evidence can be quite effective. And uh, David Holmes was very, uh, in his opening statement, uh, uh, full of praise for Ambassador Yovanovitch. What was your uh, your assessment in the end of that of the uh, of the effect of the public hearing this morning? The American people saw a smart, dedicated, tough anti-corruption ambassador who was removed from her post, not because she was not fighting corruption, but because she was fighting corruption and she was a barrier to President Trump wanting to weaponize corruption to his personal benefit. I also believe, uh, Lawrence, that this was bigger than just Ambassador Yovanovitch, and, and she recognized that, that if the president can do this to her, he can do it to anyone. And that should be of great concern that a president would use his powers to act this way. As she acknowledged, the president has every right to remove someone from office if it's for a good reason, not if it's for a corrupt reason. Uh, without necessarily specific reference to uh, David Holmes' testimony, which I know you can't reveal any more about, how much more trouble is Gordon Sundland in in his testimony next week. He's already changed his testimony to your committee once uh, for fear of a possible perjury charge of uh, a testimony that he had that was in conflict with other under oath witnesses. Now he has a major conflict in his testimony with David Holmes. He never said a word about this cell phone call and clearly gave testimony indicating uh, that there, he, he had no additional communication with the president that wasn't included in his testimony. Uh, this is very clearly the David Holmes testimony is a very clear contradiction of that. So where, where do you see Gordon Sondland's possible legal jeopardy at this point tonight? Gordon Sondland has the opportunity to come forward and do the right thing uh, on Wednesday. Uh, Lawrence, I have a different view of Gordon Sondland because as a prosecutor, I presented to juries a lot of witnesses like Gordon Sondland, people who were not necessarily forthcoming at the first time they were asked to recall uh, something that happened. But uh, over time, uh, for a variety of reasons, usually because they want to do the right thing, evolve and give the full version of the truth. And Mr. Sondland, uh, I hope, uh, comes forward on Wednesday and gives us that version because uh, this investigation, his obligation to the Constitution and our country and the integrity uh, of this process is relying on that. Congressman Eric Swalwell, thank you very much for joining us after this very long day for My you pleasure. with the committee's work. Thanks, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.